This is a really simple video edit that I made for social media posts this morning that was showing how you could take even a really bad picture and use AI and some Photoshop skills to turn that bad photo into a pretty good looking thumbnail. I'll leave links below if you actually wanna follow me on social media. Now today my goal here isn't to teach people how to make thumbnails. The goal is actually showing you how you can speed up your editing process to actually make your editing process faster. And part of that is gonna be using things like custom transitions to really make your editing speed and workflow faster than it's been in the past. Let's dive in. Now, just for reference, this entire video that I did this morning all came from me opening up my photo editing software. And all I did was slowly show the layers one at a time that I used in building a recent thumbnail for a video I posted. But I wanted to make sure I could control all of these changes and present them in a way that was visually appealing as a video. So the first thing I did is I actually broke that one clip up into smaller sections for each change. Every time it changed on screen, I would put a slice right there and separate that part. And I did that for each one of the visual changes in this clip. Now, once I did that, all I did was make sure that they were all the same length. An easy way around that is to just find the length that you do want and then take your other clips, move it up to a track above that clip and then just resize it and make sure it matches the same length. Now, making sure that you have the snapping tool enabled when you do something like that can really make things faster. It'll actually grab that and help snap it to the closest cut. Then once it's the same length, just drop it back in the track. I did these to all of these, make sure it's the same length of ones that I've already worked on and then put it back in place. Now, the other thing I did at the beginning of this edit was I wanted to show that really horrible picture of me, the one holding the plate. I knew I was gonna put the DaVinci Resolve logo up there and I knew I would replace the plate. I added that picture at the beginning and I made sure that clip was the same length as the rest. But I also know that in this project, I actually swapped it. I flipped it horizontally because I wanted the plate to be on the other side of me. And if you go to the section where I actually have more of the thumbnail start to be developed, you can see I'm facing the other way. So all I did was I made sure I had that exact same clip placed here. I selected it and then up in the upper right inspector under the video tab, I just clicked on the horizontal flip button and it swapped it the other way. So now if you were to play through this timeline as I have these pieces equal and separated, you would see that there I am holding the plate. The next stage it's flipped the other way. Now I'm in my editing software, background is put in, I'm laid in there, there's a color change, and then the sunglasses are laid over my face. So those are the very quick steps of what was happening in the thumbnail construction. But I wanted to add more life to this short clip that I was gonna put on social media. So the very first thing that came to mind is I need to add some transitions from scene to scene. Because I think that can really help make the motion of what's going on visually more appealing than just a quick cut to the next thing. Now, most of you know from previous videos that I've done about DaVinci Resolve that all of your different types of transitions and effects are down in your lower left of the edit page where we're working today. If you don't see them, make sure you go to the upper left and have the effects icon ticked. Make sure that's turned on so that you can see them. Now, I've got a lot of different transitions here, some that come with DaVinci Resolve Studio 18.6, which is what I'm using, some that come with every version of DaVinci Resolve, including the free version. And I've got a bunch at the bottom that are ones that I have downloaded from places like Storyblocks that I've added into my collection of transitions that I can use whenever I'm editing a project. So the very first thing I'm thinking about was going from me holding that plate, that horrible picture that looks like I definitely need more sleep, Look at the red eyes and the bags going on. Good Lord. So what I did when I flipped it, I said, well, what's a great transition that would make that flip make sense? And I actually, instead of just having it turn, I said, I wonder if I could get a transition that would actually flip the whole thing like a card horizontally, here to here. I actually have a card flip transition and you can see it right here. Anytime you just put your mouse over a transition and scroll from left to right, it'll actually show you what that transition is gonna look like if you had brought it into your timeline. So that feels like the right one to use. Let me bring that down and place it between those two pieces. Now, if I expand this timeline a bit, you all know there's a slider just below the right of your preview window. Left click hold, you can stretch that out and you can see more. And if I hit play, I can see how that worked. Pretty cool, I kind of like the speed, it kind of works right there. It helps enhance the idea of taking the image and flipping it. But then it goes into that next clip, which is my photo editing software with none of the layers showing, just the basic white screen. So I wanna do something a little different there. Now I'm a huge fan of very simple transitions. I like things like straight cuts or dissolves or crossfades. 
They're natural. They're not disruptive. They don't pull your eye in a million different directions. Not that those kind of transitions aren't often cool, but I think a great video doesn't need to rely on crazy transitions to be a cool looking video. Now let me place that playhead between the image of me that's flipped and then the opening shot of my photo editing software with just a blank screen. When I do that, I can start looking at things like the dissolves and I can do the exact same trick and just scroll over it to see what I think makes sense. That's an additive dissolve. It actually puts a little bit of a highlight in the dissolve. So it gets a little bit whiter, like a bit of a slight flash when it's dissolving from one particular clip to another one. The one below it is called a blur dissolve. Real straightforward stuff, right? It's still a dissolve. It's still fading from one to the next. But as it does it, it sort of creates a cross blur that you can see. That could be a cool one too. This one's called the dip to color dissolve, which actually goes to a full black screen and then comes back up when it's going into the next one. You can actually control the color of that. If you didn't want it to be black, it could be something else, but it's almost like a complete fade to black and fade back in from black. Last but not least, they have what they call a smooth cut, which actually has kind of a ripple wavy design from one cut to the next. So it's a dissolve, but it gives a little ripple effect with it. Kind of funny that they call it smooth cut. It should be called wavy cut. Now, I personally tend to like the additive dissolve. I like the fact that it gets a little brighter as it dissolves and then fades back in. I don't wanna overwhelm the viewer with the transition so they're so busy focusing on that, they're not paying attention to the different layers that are being added here into this thumbnail. So that simple additive blur I like, and I'm gonna bring that down and place it between the two. And if I play this, you'll see how it actually plays out. I think it actually takes a little longer than I would like. I personally want that to be faster. And if you ever put a transition into your timeline, the way to control the length of it is just go down and select it and then left click and hold on either side of it and you can stretch it in and out to make it longer or shorter. And I decide it's a little long. I wanna make this a little shorter. That's pretty decent. Now you can choose any transition you want, but if you modify it like I just did, and you're in a project similar to this where you have a lot more cuts coming, then probably the natural instinct is to say, well, I'd like to put that same transition in all of these other spots so that the changes are consistent. Now, the problem is if you grab that exact same transition and then went to put it on the next clip, you'd be sitting there trying to figure out what the right length was and modify it. And if you even done more and gone up to the transition section up here, and maybe you change the start ratio, the end ratio up here, or even change the transition curve. Maybe you put a different ease onto it, an in and out ease. You would have to go back and individually change each one of those transitions one at a time. That's a pain in the butt. That can take up a lot of time, but there's an easier way. Let me show you how. All you need to do is take the very first transition and change it in any way you want, change the parameters on it, get it to the right link that you want, and make sure you think it looks the way you want it to look in your project. And then all you need to do is select that transition in your timeline right click on it, and then scroll down to create transition preset. Now this will open up a dialogue window that will allow you to save everything you've done for this particular transition as your own custom preset. Name that thing something so it makes sense to you, and let's call it, you know, Daniel's Dissolve. That's a nice alliteration. And then just click OK. Now you've actually saved all of those changes you made in that transition so that you can come grab that right from the video transitions dialog on the left. Now to find that custom preset transition, what you wanna do is go back over to the left in the toolbox under video transitions. You're gonna to need to scroll down a little bit and watch for wipe. When you see the wipe transitions, just below that you'll see user. These are the user transitions that you've made yourself, your custom presets. And you can see right here I've got Daniel's Dissolve. So now if I wanna take that and put it into all of the other transitions in my project, I just left click and hold, bring it over, drag it in, and you can see it's the exact same length. It even has the change where I move the ease from none to an in and out ease, a little smoother how it comes in and out, a little more of a curve. And now in my project, you just have to keep grabbing them, dragging them over and put them wherever I want that transition to happen. Simple, it saves you so much time. Let me show you another thing that can really speed up your workflow when you're working on a project like this. Now, when I put these together and I played it through, I actually thought that the overall motion was a little long. It hung a little long on each frame. It was just supposed to be a social media post that showed some very quick changes. So the question became, well, how do I get this whole thing to speed up? There's a lot of little different pieces and transitions in here. Do I have to go through each thing and speed up every single element? There's an easier way that I actually showed in a recent video and it's using a feature called the compound clip. Let me show you real quick. 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything in the timeline. And all I did was I left click in the gray area, held, and I drew a box around all of the pieces in the timeline that I wanted to be affected. See how everything, including the transitions, are now highlighted in red? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click anywhere over those assets. I'm gonna go up to new compound clip and I'm gonna create a compound clip. That's gonna take every one of these things that's all there separated and turn that all into one asset in the timeline. I'll just call this compound clip too, why not? Now you can see it's one clip, but all of those transitions are still happening. Everything's right there, but it's a much less cluttered timeline. But what's really cool is you can select that compound clip in your timeline and go over to things like the speed change. I can speed up this entire thing in one motion. You can use the wheel to do that by left clicking, holding and dragging it to the right or left, or you can type in the speed change. I want it to be about one and a half times as fast, so that's 150%, hit enter, and then it shrinks everything down. So now I've got this whole clip moving about one and a half times as fast. It's looking really smooth, and I did it all in one motion by creating that compound clip. If you wanna learn more about how you can edit faster using DaVinci Resolve, click on the video that's on screen now or the ones that I'll link down below. Peace.